I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. We're going for a drive. Twenty nineteen Audi A seven. Technic. Top trim. So this is a sport back. So a huge hatchback, lots of room. Absolutely love it. There's not much that competes with this. I mean, the Stinger's got a big hatchback as well. Yes, it is, but that's not as premium luxury as this. Panamera, kind of? Yeah, kind of. Let's get into the horsepower and torque. 335 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque from a three-liter V6 turbo with a mild hybrid system. Yeah, it felt like that. I felt like I always got a little bit of an like electric push here and there and that electric sound. Yeah, so it's a very mild system. It does add a little bit of power whenever it can. And then it also helps with coasting and all this stuff. So pretty cool. So Audi competes with BMWs and Mercedes, right? Yes, Lexus and a bunch of other brands. But like mostly yes, the BMW Germans. and Mercedes. The Germans. And a little bit of Porsche. A lot of those cars are very confusing. They are. But when you got into this car, you called me with joy telling me you knew how everything worked. It's so intuitive. It's the best. Compared to Mercedes and BMW, why do you like this so much? Look at the smile on my face. This didn't exist in the BMW X5. So I'm so happy. You're not stressed out by anything. I am so relaxed right now, Yuri. So we're gonna start with the infotainment by request of Jacob. Yes, I told Yuri in advance that I would like to talk about the infotainment first. This is new. It doesn't have the scroll wheel like the S5 we did. And it's, I wanna say flawless. So let's get into it then. Okay, so this is pretty much the BMW call out video. I rest my hand right here. Heated and cooled seats right at my fingertips. I don't have to go through a second menu once I press the heated seat button to then cool my seats. But does it bother you that the buttons are in a screen? Absolutely not, because they're so well laid out and the sizes of them are perfect. Then we also have our heated steering wheel, all of our climate controls, and this screen down here also adjusts as you press different buttons. So if I want to direct the air wherever I want it, I press that part of the screen and then another menu thing pops up. Do you like that more than just having like hard buttons for climate? No. But for a touchscreen, this is pretty much as good as it gets, I think. So there are buttons that don't change up in the top section that I can raise and lower my spoiler. I can also adjust my head up display, which we couldn't do in the Porsche while driving. Here, it lets you. So this is even better than Porsche's system, who is also owned by the Volkswagen Group. So they even perfected things that Porsche, I think, didn't get right. Well, you know that I don't fully like the Porsche infotainment. Yes, we do. So. Like, yeah, this is obviously better than that. Are you so far in agreement with everything I'm saying? Well, that the buttons are within reach, yeah. It's definitely a lot easier to click stuff than BMW and sometimes Mercedes, because Mercedes does have hard buttons yes, they do. for that stuff, which is better than a touchscreen infotainment button. 100% agree. Okay. And before we move up to the top screen, we also have sort of hard-ish touch buttons at the bottom just like Porsche does. So you actually have to click them and then the menu option pops up. Okay, and then what's also interesting is this is a normal touch screen. Yes, it is. But you can change the settings so there's haptic feedback so it won't actually click something and confirm it unless you push harder. Which I wouldn't want and I'm glad that there's an option to turn that off. Yeah, I tried it, didn't like it, turned it off. Lucky for us, our Audi rep told us it's so much better without it on. And it is, and the fact that you can actually change that Great job, Audi. Okay, how about the top screen? Similar to Porsche. With the menu buttons on the left. Exactly. And if you're in Europe, the menu buttons are on the right. And they are customizable. So you put your Apple CarPlay there. Yeah, instead of the phone, because like, whatever. Yeah, exactly. This does, I will spoil it for everybody, rewind satellite radio, and I have been thoroughly enjoying that. Yeah, a ton. But this does not have tune mix. No, it doesn't. Which Mercedes does have. And I don't really care about that, but I understand why you do. It's like my favorite feature. But rewinding is super easy. Going through all the menus and everything is super easy. We have a nice home screen and guess what we have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and we've got wireless Apple CarPlay and you have the option to go wired or wireless so yeah BMW, BMW what's, up? what's up what's up what's up what's up yo calling you out <laughs> <laughs> and you know who else also doesn't have it Porsche Porsche does not have Android Auto and yeah. this is owned by Volkswagen Group but there are like sub companies who have different clients who have different needs yes for sure but just like just like how Rolls-Royce doesn't have Apple CarPlay but the BMWs do. More infotainment stuff. So the satellite radio thing, I really liked. You can set your favorites easy, and what's cool is you can adjust left and right from your steering wheel, and then it keeps up on the favorite screen, which is nice. And you can see all the songs that are playing when you're in the satellite radio list mode, and you can even get that in your middle gauges so you can look at everything that's playing in your favorites. Oh, I love everything about this. While looking down, while looking forward, which is like probably a nightmare for the Mazda engineers. They're like, <laughs> 
too much stuff where you should be driving. Seven, seven menu options. No more than seven. You can't remember more than seven. <laughs> Look at this, I remember everything. There's like 50. And then for maps, navigation, we have, I guess, an Audi navigation, but it's got Google Maps interface and look, which is pretty cool. I used it, it was nice, easy to use. So you had Google Maps in the middle of your gauges. I don't think it's Google Maps traffic, which means there's no real point of using it. Yeah, I would still fully use Android Auto because I have it. And then we have our vehicle settings. So you tap that, you have so many different options. This also has air suspension optional and you can adjust that through the Audi Drive Select. Then you have your dynamic mode, your comfort mode, and they are absolutely serene in comfort mode. This gives me almost S-class levels of comfort in here. So damn close. Yeah, it's very quiet, very comfortable, such a nice ride. It's insanely nice. I've never been this relaxed outside of an S-class driving a car, like overall experience. So is that pretty much everything with the infotainment? It's actually not. One more BMW call out. When you put it in reverse, we have a 3D reverse camera, 360 camera as well. This one works flawlessly because I can circle around the car with no lag. I don't have to press predetermined points yeah. and then go to those and wait for them to load. They went like iPhone style with zooming in and pinching and stuff. Exactly. And then your 360 camera and all that stuff is great. When you're clicking what you want to do, it like shows your front wheel, your back wheel, front, back, anywhere you click, it makes perfect sense. It reminds me a lot of the Stinger, but the Audi guy left to go work on Kia. Yes, he but did. now this is a new upgrade since he left. So it's like, are they circling back and copying what that guy's doing for <laughs> Kia now? I don't know, but it's super high res and it's really, really good. And then you know what else this has? Natural language. Heat my seat, it's the best. But this doesn't have, hey Audi, you have to actually click the button. Which is completely fine. Yeah, but I mean, there's like a gimmick level that people like in luxury cars. Exactly, and this shaves all those gimmicks and just gives you the function, and that's why I love it. No gimmicks. So let's sum up the infotainment compared to Mercedes infotainment and compared to BMW infotainment. This is my favorite. This one is more simple, more easy to use. It's not confusing, but it doesn't have a scroll wheel. Correct. I think it's like the nice middle ground. Yeah, for sure. Like it's equally good at everything for infotainment. There's a couple other things that maybe other ones have nicer. Like this doesn't have the two big screens like Mercedes has. Certain things. You can't spin your hand. You can't say, hey BMW or hey Audi. Darn. But I think it's overall the best. This is overall the best. But other ones do other things better. Overall, the best in the entire automotive industry. Cool. That's uh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the rest of this car. Let's do some little bit of handling through Cliche Corner. A lot bit. And then get Yuri into the looks. Okay. Let's go for a full luxury send into Cliche Corner. Put this thing in dynamic and feel that rear wheel steering. Look how this grips, man. It is unreal. Look at this. It I shouldn't know. be doing this. It's so big, but it feels like it's so small. Like. This gives me almost the same sense as the RS3 in size while driving it. It's yeah, insane. Yeah, while I was flying through corners, it just like rotates, 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 more than you expect. Exactly. So it's the whole Quattro system because this is all wheel drive. This has rear wheel steering and it's just unreal. The whole package, this handles so well in dynamic. You actually feel a pretty big difference. You put it back into comfort when you're out of cliche corner and it is so damn good on regular roads, absorbs everything. Or keep it in auto and everything will be fine. And before you drive, let's talk about this drivetrain a little bit more. It is quick, but it's not the fastest. So when you floor it, you do zero to 100 in about 5.3 seconds, kilometers obviously. And it doesn't sound too crazy or anything here. Do you think it's pumped in? I don't think so. I think it's so damn quiet that yeah. they're actually deleting sound from here. I tried going through the different modes and it didn't feel like pumped in, but it just sounded nice and natural. Yeah, like super natural, super quiet. Like that's the thing I can't get over is how quiet this is. But anyways, pulling power, it's really, really good, except on the highway, it's a little bit delayed, but that's because you're on the highway going it's, a little too fast. It's definitely A power. Yes. It's not S power or RS power. Exactly. And it's like completely adequate. It's five steps above adequate, but it's not like crazy. And this does have a seven speed transmission and is pretty much flawless like it feels like a cvt in the best way possible because you can't feel gear changes but you can tell that there's gears and the paddles suck yeah because they're plastic paddles and i think you only get metal paddles on the r8 i don't even know if you get it on like the rs3 maybe the rs5 oh uh, okay maybe. yeah yeah it's weird, it's weird. Yeah, <laughs> anyways, plastic paddles, pretty much straight out of a Volkswagen Passat type thing. <laughs> and then with the dynamic modes, you can also put it into sport shifting by pulling back on the shifter. Yeah, exactly, and the shifts are really crisp. Can't say enough good things about the drivetrain. Everything about this car, I love. I think I have that same feeling for this car that you had about the E-Class. Oh, wild. Yeah. yeah, it's so much function over form that it's just, it's perfect. Like, it, there's nothing over the top, there's no gimmicks. Yeah. Everything is just 
Right. You're getting the car just for you and not necessarily for other people to look at it. Where for the me, for the E-Class, I really liked inside and I really liked that other people had to look at it. Exactly. Now let's get you into the driver's seat and talk about looks. Looks. Great body lines, the way it hunches over and the way everything pops in most lightings, like for a great car to pop this much is wild. Exactly, they killed it with the sport back design. And I like the way they do the body lines on this rather than the RS5. You know how the RS5 has got that one little like kind of thing that comes up? Yeah, yeah. With the hard, like this is just longer and silkier, smoother. Exactly, like the overall shape, it's like they took that Mercedes CLS thing and just yeah. improved on it like tenfold. And from the back end, it does kind of take a little while to get used to like the hunchback and the way the taillights sit in. But like when you really look at it for a bit, like it looks so nice. And then the way the spoiler can go up at the back, that looks super badass. But I think it also looks just as good with it down. Exactly. And then the way the taillights look, man, like they really nailed the taillights here, like the way the lines go and everything and right across. Razor sharp. Audi is known for their headlights and taillights. And then you got sequential sequential taillights and headlights. However, in Europe, they're like truly sequential. They don't have that extra little thing because of US regulations here. And then staying on the back end, if we move down, we don't have exhaust pipes. No, we don't. And we don't have fake exhaust tips. This is the perfect way to do the no exhaust thing. Yeah, and I think it looks really good. Yeah, no complaints. Unlike that uh, Q8. Yeah, the SQ5, I think. Yeah, that's, or yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. The fake exhaust tips where they made like a fake chrome thing. Anyways. They learned. Yes, they hopefully and now, did. And now it's wicked. Exactly. And then, you know, we got the huge hatch and it's kicked to open. You can close it with the key fob. Like it's all very usable. And look how much room there is in the back. Box test. Six, seven, eight, and nine. Welcome Vinti to the box test club. Get a box on patreon.com slash the pipes. And now moving on to the front end, what do you think of the front grille area? Love it. The ratio of grille to front end is great. I am not super stoked on the current front ends of Audis right now. Like I think the old R8 looks so much better than the current two R8s. I do agree. The grille area from the previous ones is better, but I have no issues with this one. I just think the old one is better. But I think the best looking Audi grille right now is the TT. I'm like really? super stoked for that. I think that thing looks like the coolest of all the Audis right now. All right. But headlights, okay. Usually Audis got like, they started with those little LED line they dots from back in the day. They started them on the R8. And then they went full like a, a solid light. Yes. Kind of like Tesla's doing right now. And now they went back to the dots, but the dots have lines that come out. Yeah, exactly. So like they, they're reinventing the same thing over and over again and it looks so good. They do a great job every single time. And how about the radars in this grill? I didn't really notice them until you pointed them out. So that means they don't bother me. But like, it's like two things on the sides. I think that's the radars. This it's, thing has so many sensors because it has a bunch of different lane keep and stuff, but yeah, they're sensors. But uh, I think when like the RS comes out, it's going to look wicked because I saw an yeah. orange RS7 on the highway. I was like, holy crap. Yeah, yeah. The older RS7s looked unreal. And then like a nice bright color because Audi's got some really cool bright colors. And this thing has such good wheels. They, Huge 21s. They just look like cool Audi wheels. Yeah. So they look like a five spoke, but then because of the black paint and stuff, they're actually multi-spoke and they look so good. And what is the Continental recommended tire? The Sport Contact 6. And with the outside looks done, do you think that looks better than comparable BMWs and Mercedes's? Comparable BMWs, absolutely. So that would be the six the grand six coupe. grand coupe. See, I think that looks better than this. I think the front end is more aggressive, but this has a better shape overall to me. It's kind of like up to your taste. And then how about for Mercedes? The CLS, that's probably the closest thing to this. That's a toss up. See, I like I like the CLS looks more. I think the older one looked better than the new CLS, but the CLS does look really good. I'm I'm equal on that. Yeah, it's like a pretty it's a pretty good thing yeah, all around. Yeah. Now I want to talk about the looks of the interior briefly. We've got a nice dark brownish wood. It's very dark brownish. It is. It's really nice. It's very reminiscent of that Mercedes. What is it? Dark ash wood, I think. Yes, very similar. Open pour. It looks really nice. And then how much piano black do we have in here? Tons. The most. <laughs> But since it's such an expensive car, is the piano black fine because it's someone else clean it for you status? It's not at that like Rolls Royce level of clean it for you thing. Anyways, I don't mind it because everything else is so good. It so, is a little gross. So that's the thing. As long as the infotainment works perfectly in a luxury car, you're okay with the piano black. As long as everything overall works perfectly. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. And then we've got metal stuff too, accents everywhere. It looks really good. And what I really like is at night the lights we have in here. Oh yeah, the interior lighting. So you can customize the colors. It's pretty good. We got a couple lines and a couple glow sections. It's not as like in your face as the E-Class with like big swoops like, look at me, look at my lights. It's just more like, you want some purple and some orange? 
we can do that for so you. So better than BMW? Below Mercedes, above BMW, I think. Okay. And all the materials in here are all very nice. Everything's top notch. Everything's nice and soft. The seats are so comfortable. They are like super comfortable. And these are the optional seats. So we actually do have massage as well. And it's super easy to use. You just click this button on the side of the seat and then it prompts the massage settings right up to the middle. Or you just actually press your seat button through the vehicle settings. And you can adjust the bolsters on the seat and on the back. Yeah, and your thigh support as well. And the headrests go back and forward. Like, <clears throat> they're killing it, like everything's good. Yeah. Now we gotta dabble with the gauge section. Go for it. We've got the digital display. Is it called the virtual cockpit? Something like that, I believe. So this one's got the two bubbles on the side. You can't have just the one bubble in the middle because it's not an S or an RS. That's right. So if you click view, you can see all the stuff super big, like your map, or your satellite radio stations, it's really nice. Everything's high res, high quality, no lag, unlike the Volkswagen version of this, which has lag. And then there's also a reduced display, which I was complaining about in previous Audis, where I had to go to the earth, zoom out, and make it nighttime. Now there's actually a menu option for reduced display. Yo, how, how much you wanna bet I'm the one who caused that change? Oh yeah, I wanna bet a billion dollars. Straight pipes changing the industry. <laughs> Let's change the industry with the visor test. Three, two, one. Yes! Ah, yes! Look, all the way, all, all the way. All the damn way. Look, look. Ah, perfect. Good job. This, that's it. This is the best car on the planet. Well, I mean, the looks aren't the craziest. Uh, <laughs> small cup of coffee. Okay, so it does kind of fail. I had a small cup of Timmy's coffee full, and these things grip so hard that it was like a struggle to pull it out. So I would say fail-ish. Like if you put a piece of tape. So fail-ish, but pass-ish. Yeah, yeah, tape pass. Okay, what do you think about the steering wheel itself? You know, it feels kind of big. Really? Yeah, it felt like kind of big, but it's like comfortable, nice. All the buttons are here, easy to use, but they are piano black. Yeah, and there's pretty much no steering feel in this car, but it doesn't really matter. Like wherever you aim it, you get through pretty quick. Exactly. And speaking of the infotainment, we should probably speak about the speaker settings. Okay, so this has the optional system and it is unreal, so much bass. There's actually a separate menu option for bass and subwoofer. I cranked them both up, listened to Old Town Road and loved it. <laughs> okay, this, by the time this video comes out, that <laughs> meme's gonna be super dead. Exactly. But whatever, it doesn't matter, we're old. We're yeah. allowed to be late on memes. That's right. But the best part is these little speaker things that pop up when you start up the car. Yeah, they're so cool. And you know what else is cool about starting up the car? The welcome sound. Better than the Genesis one, for sure. Way better. And you can make it so loud, like it's nice. But you can also turn it off. Yeah, and then when you unlock and lock the car, the headlights do a bunch of little dancing stuff. Which is nice. And then when you lock the car, you get the little rich people beep beep. Uh, what about lane keep assist? This is not as good as Mercedes and BMW. So this doesn't have the traffic jam assist that like lets you keep your eyes forward and like hands off underneath 50 kilometers an hour. So we do have that package and apparently we are supposed to have it, but it's not working for us in traffic. Yeah, it's not like, traffic jam assist BMW style. It's like a traffic jam assist thing, but like it yells at you to put your hands back on the wheel. That's stuff. exactly it. It and works like, really well. It just yeah. yells at you a lot. And here's a gratuitous shot of Jacob sitting behind himself in the back seat. Okay, how about windows down? Yeah, they don't go down very far. You gotta sacrifice something for this shape. I'm okay with that. Me too. Who cares about the backseat people? Exactly. <laughs> All right, so I guess let's wrap this up with the price. Starts at $78,000 for the Progressive, and this one with $20,000 in options on the Technic is $109,095. That's kind of a lot. It is a lot, but every comparable car is equally a lot. What kind of person would get this over a Mercedes or a BMW? Someone that likes function over form and is not trying to impress other people other than himself. A driver-oriented person who doesn't need assists, who wants things that they want and doesn't care what other people think, really. And someone who wants Android Auto to function perfectly, unlike a BMW. And someone who wants their 360 camera to function even better than a BMW's. And someone who wants a sound system that's also probably better than both of those. Maybe Mercedes is debatable, though. All right, so I think we pretty much nailed it. I love this car. Let us know what Audis you guys want us to do next. I am so excited to review the rest of the Audi lineup because I love this so much. TTRS. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Patreon.com slash the straight pipes. Maybe get your name on a box. Join our YouTube membership and Teespring for Straight Pipes merch. I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. This is a subscription break. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. We didn't even, we didn't do that.